I speak to you today in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In our gospel reading today, we have a story about the religious leaders confronting Jesus about he and his disciples not washing their hands before eating. And Jesus responds, basically saying that what is more important than outer cleanliness is inner cleanliness. It is tempting for us Christians to think that Jesus was abolishing the Old Testament laws and instead showing us a new and better and more spiritual way. But that is not what Jesus is doing in our reading today. It is essential for us to understand that the cleanliness laws of the Old Testament were the science of the day. They were the ways that the Israelite people made sense of their world and how to thrive in it, how to be clean and holy and healthy in relationship with God and their community. That's what it means to be righteous. It means to be in right relationship. So Jesus wasn't condemning the science of the day, but reminding the religious leaders of the fuller truth of their tradition. And he even quotes the prophet Isaiah to make the point that a holy and clean and healthy inner life is the true source of a holy and clean and healthy outer life. The Jewish leaders had forgotten this truth of their tradition, this deeper truth of their science of the day, and Jesus was reminding them of it. Now, since the Jewish purity laws were the science of the day, we are right to update them with our modern scientific understanding. We draw from modern science today in our theologizing with two caveats. The modern science is both more trustworthy and less trustworthy than the science of the day was back in biblical times. First, modern science is more trustworthy because the modern scientific method is an amazingly robust key for unlocking useful truths about the world when it is followed precisely. The scientific method of today is way more trustworthy than the scientific method of 2,000 years ago. But second, we're also right to consider it less trustworthy than the science of the day during biblical times because we no longer treat the science of the day as a kind of infallible divine revelation. There's much more that can be said about both of those topics, but rather than going further off on that tangent, let's turn back to our gospel reading and look at it with fresh eyes as a debate over the science of the day. We are told in our story that the experts and those well studied in the science of the day saw Jesus and the disciples not following proper hand-washing procedures. What the science said was the way to be clean and healthy individuals in order to ensure healthy relationships with God and with their community. Because that is what being clean and righteous has always meant, to be healthy and in healthy relationships with God and a person's community. So Jesus and the disciples are people who appear not to be following the science of the day, which was meant to benefit the community and the community then calls them out on it. Now, you all know that I am a fervent pro-vaccine advocate. My family and I have been vaccinated, and I try to convince people in my real life and on social media to become vaccinated all the time. There's a part of me that wants to side with the experts in this story today and to cheer when Jesus and the disciples seem to be ostracized from their community for not following the science. But maybe there's a corrective in this reading. For those of us who are pro-vaccine here today, maybe the corrective for us is a reminder of a deeper truth, that true health at its heart means a healthy community life, and that the cleanliness that leads to true health and community is not just to be found in a kind of outer cleanliness, but in our inner cleanliness. Perhaps we people who are pro-vaccine are to be reminded to check the attitudes of our hearts towards those who are hesitant about being vaccinated, even if we believe that there are all kinds of good scientific and moral reasons to be vaccinated. Perhaps us pro-vaccine people today are called to set a different model of relationship 
with those whom this world deems unclean, to open ourselves up and to be in real relationship with them, the kind of relationship where we are physically present to one another. Because if this pandemic has taught us anything about relationships, it's that they struggle greatly when we are not physically present with one another. Now, I'm not telling anyone to be reckless about COVID safety. Those who are immunocompromised need to stay safe. But I am saying that divisions about vaccination status are ripping the fabric of our community apart. And that the church can and should be a model of loving community to our world. That is why regular church attendance is so revolutionary. It is a statement that we refuse to be blown apart by all the forces of this world that say certain people are not worth our time, certain people are not clean, certain people are dangerous, and therefore we should stay far away from them. Relationship, true relationship, always has and always will hold risks for those who choose to seek it in this world, and that will never change. But we have reached a point in this pandemic where we can open ourselves in relationship again without it being an unreasonable amount of risk. Regular church attendance is important and valuable precisely because it is the risks we encounter in relationships with God and one another that lead to our inner growth. We open ourselves up to the challenges of those relationships. But the more consistent and committed we are in those relationships, the safer the space is for those challenges to be encountered and growth to happen through them. We need to commit to one another to love one another through thick and thin, through the times of affirmation as well as the times of correction. It is only in that kind of community that people feel safe to change because they know that they will continue to be accepted as they make those inner changes. So today, come to the Lord's table and share communion with those that the world might label unclean. This is what Jesus's whole ministry was about, breaking down barriers between the clean and the unclean. These kinds of acts of faith, these inner choices that we make to prioritize relationship, these movements to break down barriers in our church and world, these are acts that truly wash us clean. They give us that inner washing that Jesus spoke about today. and We are all better for it. So whether you've washed your hands or not, come. Come in love to the Lord's table. In Jesus' name, amen.